I think she's okay. Well, let's find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's everything. That's the whole thing. But how? How? What? She's just chilling? Not surprised she's alive, but surprised she's standing here in direct sunlight. What happened? What the hell? How's, she, how's this possible? Am I crazy or does she look humanized? Good morning. With that out of the way, with these greetings out of the way, please explain. Has Tanjiro gone insane? <laughs> Cue, like, this really popular fan theory that people make about everything that I hate, that oh, actually he died, and from this point on it's a dream. If that were true, this would be that moment. He just lost it. Are you real? The writers hated this decision, though, because it means now they have to write dialogue. Just so weird. <laughs> This is, I mean, I don't even know how to process this yet. This is a huge development. So many questions. How? Is it permanent? Does she lose her powers? Does Sanjo keep going after this? I mean, I know he does, but... Do you know something, Genya? He seems to have dabbled in the dark arts himself. He's relieved. As it goes, death fake out took more out of him than the whole preceding battle. All right, now you got some explaining to do, Demon Slayer. Oh yeah, <laughs> Hiroji. Wait, why is the- oh, it's gonna disappear now. This is what just happened. Goodbye. No final words, huh? <laughs> Yay! So good natured. Oh, this is, uh, Muzan? Run! Okay, try to tell you. It, yeah, it got removed. Yeah, this a direction is f forming. There is an obvious path here. Yeah, Nezuko was on his radar before. Right, the one physical weakness that they still have, their one vulnerability, which of course, in a way, is still him kind of confusing what strength means. Thanks for the tea. Okay, for me, this episode, as exciting as it is to kill an upper rank demon, we've kind of established we could do that. It felt good as usual. It was amazing. Action was great. But for me, the real way to this episode is the stakes for the future. So many things in the last like 10 minutes form a picture for me of the future of this show that is some of the most gripping I can think of and creates a, a turn on the on the story that takes us out of this kind of episodic, we're going to kill the upper rank demons one by one narrative. We may not need to because the grand demon is coming for us. Combine that development with the fact that we just had a preview of Tanjiro's priorities in the vein of what I was talking about in terms of a, a real test, a true test of who he is. I mean, it's perfect that we lost an upper rank demon and Muzan's reaction was to celebrate. It's a really cool choice that in light of this victory, things just got somewhat darker. <laughs> it's a long time to wait for a goal. This is pre-demon Muzan. Speaking of evil being born from weakness, everyone else so healthy. Yeah, all the upper rank demons are just Muzan in a sense. Whoops. I love rainy days too. Yeah, I mean, it's a very different reason. I feel like it's a big leap in figuring that out. I guess when you get that hunger, you're gonna need a bigger buff. からを手に入れたのだ。青い彼岸花という薬の作り方はわからなかった。その薬には実際に青色の彼岸花が使用されているようだったが。Wait, have we seen those flowers before? I can't remember when or how, but I have the distinct impression that this is not the first time I've seen that. 青い彼岸花と太陽を克服できる体質のものを探すことの this reminds me of uh, Father in Full Metal Alchemist. Like this one solution thing that's not actually the right solution that the heroes actually have found. Dude, you were looking for a thousand years. You couldn't find it. Yeah, there it is. The perfect being thing. Very, very, very familiar. These villains, when will they learn? Everyone made it. 
よかった。無事で。Except for a lot of villagers, but I don't care about them. 大切なものを取り戻した。My memories. そんな、何もしてないよ、俺。Every move Tanjiro made was crucial. Every move everyone made was crucial. Join our party. Here it is. But he didn't break the sword this time. It would be safe to assume, usually. Join our party, please. Relatable. It's just like、uh, end of season two. Get a group hug. I expect the end of season four to be a ten person group hug. We're gonna need all hands on deck because Muzan is coming. I wonder how the voice actor reacted when she found out she'd actually be saying words. She got so used to the.、Mm -hmm. He's actually just really good at his sword. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this lady. Oh, that's, a, that's amazing. That's a huge development. Everyone's playing their part, doing some work. So you've noticed too. Not being totally overwhelmed, maybe, by demonhood. This guy. What is his name? Chachaman? Way out of here. Knowing Tanjiro, he might stick around for the rebuild. Yeah, <laughs> imagine the scales. Comparing the scales. Tanjiro does the impossible, saves an entire village. Villagers. Provide a cart. Tanjiro, eternally grateful, nonetheless. That's especially true this arc, yeah. He's not wrong. But he was kind of the spark. Yeah. Also, this season is very important for establishing this long legacy. You still put her in the box? I guess she just likes it at this point. She got used to it. Turns out the, the box wasn't actually about her portability or survival. It's just Tanjiro likes to put his sister in a box. Definitely see this guy differently after this arc, though. Badass in his own way. This guy's just a threat. It's a menace. Bye, everyone. I totally would stay, though, if you just asked me to do something for you. Yeah, sure, you don't need any help. Anyone need their shoelaces tied? Tanjiro san. Yeah, yeah, he deserves it. I mean, he doesn't want it, or he didn't ask for it. Doesn't need it. Might as well enjoy it. Is this in some way them trusting him with the secret of their location? It's nice to see him so happy. Another season over, another victory. But to me, it feels like the show has just changed forever. I mean, who knows? There's still a lot that could happen before the events I'm anticipating. There could be other upper rank demons that get in the way, obviously. But the way I see it, this cements some of the future events. And I feel like it's gonna be earlier than I thought. Muzan's coming, and the upper rank demons don't seem to even matter to Muzan that much anymore. Except maybe as a, a tool, as an army, to go up against Tanjiro and get Nezuko. Wait, they never explained. Did they explain? How, like, what, what's the deal with Nezuko? Why she can bear the sunlight? She's got special blood. Uh, why? Maybe she's been eating the, the, what do you call it? Spider flowers. That's a really cool shot. I want to know more about this legacy too. Oh, I see that he shares, Tanjiro shares his legacy of breaking swords. Truly honoring the legacy of the past. <laughs> Smiling Nezuko. End card. What? No Taisho era secret? Tanjiro too busy taking a victory lap. No Taisho era secret. This episode gets a 0 out of 10. Like I said before, that season felt so quick.、It、felt way quicker than any of the other seasons. Even though this is the first time, I, I think, I'm watching it weekly as it comes out, as opposed to just binging it, it still felt like less time somehow. I think partly because of just how quickly it got into the action. And then once it got there, it never let up. It's interesting now, sitting here, having just finished it, reflecting a little bit on it. It almost feels like the Upper Demon wasn't that important. Or it. Feels less significant now than it did in prior seasons. Like, I think a lot of people felt at the end of season two that was a turning point in that regard, and we're seeing the fruits of that here where the upper rank demon is, yeah, it's formidable. It doesn't inspire the same fear anymore, and as time goes on, Tanjiro gets more capable, Nezuko gets stronger and more involved, the Hashira get better, largely through Tanjiro's influence, things get more unified. Season two was a turning point in the hero's favor, as I and I think many people felt at that time. So the, the threat, the demon, didn't have as much weight for me as it had in the past. And I also, like, <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but I think there's 
something to it. It feels like they just kind of gave up on what they often do with the demons, where they're like, yeah, they're terrible, but let's examine why they're that case and let's get to the human inside of them. Not this time. That got thrown out the window. Bad artist demon, they didn't even bother in the show at least. And rat demon, turns out he was just kind of weird and not a good person, just a bitter man. The audience probably needed eye drops after hearing his backstory because of how dry their eyes were. But I think the demon does play a key role in the overarching narrative when it comes to exploring ideas of strength, what true strength means, the origins of evil, and therefore also heroism, the problem and the antidote that was reinforced by Muzan, who turns out had a great weakness of his own that led to resentment, if I'm reading this correctly. The lesser demons all having their own backstories, of course, but still in some key sense being representative or being limbs of Muzan, who is the figurehead of this evil. Tanjiro being the antithesis, being selfless, caring about others, service being one of his main priorities, also important is this growing wave of support for Tanjiro and the circle of strength that he's building. It started with kind of just three renegades. The first taste we got of it, it was really just Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke. With one Hashira that was really there for his wives, and then after completion of that mission, he just effed off to bang his hot wives. Tokido and Hiroji, they feel different now. Their understanding of the significance, their bond with Tanjiro, their gratitude towards him, and their renewed vigor or commitment especially from Tokido, to keep going forward, is a continuation of this this upward growth into strength that we've been building, and also is what to me feels essential because of what's been previewed. The Dark Lord himself is descending upon us, which is just really exciting. And not only because of the power and the stakes and the fact that he's the main villain, but because of what I mentioned earlier about the test for Tanjiro. In summary, what happens when the very principles, his very motivation is subverted against him? I may be way off here. It's possible that Muzan shows up and then Tanjiro has extra strength because he's defending Nezuko and it's just a fight between the two of them. But I suspect since Muzan is so devious, he may find a way to weaponize Nezuko against Tanjiro. That would be the way to fight Tanjiro, right? Especially for Muzan, who has had run-ins with Tanjiro's ancestor, who Tanjiro reminds him of and might have a little bit of caution going into this, despite the fact that he's super overpowered physically. He's proven himself to be very clever, very resourceful, and strategic, so they're going to need every tool at their disposal. Otherwise, all the standard demon points that are great, that make the show great, apply to this season as well. Some beautiful animated moments, action great. I think my my some of my favorite action comes from Kanroji, who is just so unique in her style. Some amazing moments from Tokido as well. My fantasy for the show going forward, my, my fanfic, as I've alluded to, is first of all, Zenitsu and Itsuka need to come back because I miss them. Then throw in Tokido and Kanroji, and we got ourselves a squad, in addition to exploring New Hashira, because they're, they're some of the highlights of the show for me as well. And we still have a lot to get through. I doubt any of them will be left by the wayside or wasted. They all have a role to play, you'd imagine. I've heard that the story is not as long as I first thought. Like, there is a conclusion coming, yet it feels like there's so much to do still. There's so much ground to cover. There's so much to play with. So many tools at the author's disposal. All the Hashira, the other upper rank demons, Muzan himself, tests for Tanjiro, this legacy of the past that we have yet to explore further. As a side note, I, I love the fact that they're still paying om om homage to Rengoku, who feels alive despite his death. Really making that count, you know, making his character matter, making all the arcs connect. He will not be forgotten. So yeah, that's Demon Slayer Season 3. I had a blast watching it. Thank you to everybody for following the series, for all your support. Special thanks to patrons for making all of these videos and more possible. Look forward to seeing you guys soon for either whatever else is on the schedule or maybe next time for Demon Slayer Season 4. All right, so since the Demon Slayer Season 3 finale video got taken down for copyright, anyway, it was suggested to me that I... Uh, include this teaser, the season 4 promo, with the re-uploaded video, which I think is a great idea. So here we go. Gyu, long time to see. Oh yeah. This is, I think, the next Hashira in line that I'm most interested to find out more about. Something so different about him. And he who has a major crush on Kanroji. Uzui, huh? Interesting. Hey! That's what I wanted to say. I don't know what to think about that. Confirmed! <laughs> yes. TV anime confirmed. In case there was any confusion about what we were talking about. At first when I saw Uzui, I thought it was going to be just a shot of all the Hashira, present and past, so I was expecting to see Rengoku. But because Rengoku wasn't there, it makes me think maybe he's had enough of banging his hot wives <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> if such a thing is possible, maybe he realized the stakes are bigger than he thought. That would be an interesting twist if he came back. I mean, there's not really much to go on, it's kind of just a, a slideshow of their faces, which 
it, I guess it's sufficient because I like the Hashira. The Hashira are cool. I would love to see more of them. I mean, one thing I kept saying in season three, my hope is that slowly it gets built and becomes more unified so we have this full crew. My desires speaking, that's what I hope it means. I think what makes it most interesting to me and makes me speculate the most is not what's there, but what isn't there. So for example, we saw Kanroji, but we didn't see Tokido. So that makes me think that Kanroji will indeed be there and Tokido will maybe not be there. Could be deliberate in that sense. You imagine it would be a, a nod to manga readers to some extent. Or it just could be totally random and like totally misreading it. Who knows? I've heard that it's going to be a training arc and I see it's also called training arc. Very directly confirming that. So not entirely sure what to expect in terms of like conflict or villains. But I think based on what I've seen from season three and how it ended, the conflict is kind of already baked in because we know Muzan is coming. I think that already is sufficient in making it really exciting. As long as there's character growth there, anyone who has followed the channel for any length of time knows I love training anyway. So that's going to be great one way or the other. And we have a real gigantic purpose for the training. Throw in some new Hashira perhaps, create a feeling of unity, bring Zenitsu and Inosuke back and I feel like there's a lot of potential for it to be really great or like any combination of those things would be fine so yeah that's officially the end of the season three content that'll just have to tide us over until 2024 thank you again to everybody for following the series if you're watching this on YouTube thank you for potentially watching this video twice as always love you guys and I'll see you very soon for the next three shows on the roster which are Haikyuu continuation Vinland Saga season two the much anticipated and very soon finally Jujutsu Kaisen season two which I'm also very excited about